Yes. <laughs> Yeah, so this is um, the uh, proposal to construct a, Sith, a sixth paddle court uh, in the group of the five paddle courts that already exist on the property at Weed Beach. Um, the, uh, the court has been designed in conformance with section 810, 820, 850, and 1000 of the Darien zoning regulations under coastal site plan review, flood damage prevention, landfilling and regrading, and site plan review. Uh, the application was referred out to Joe Canis of Tie and Bond. Uh, he submitted comments for the record on May 22nd. It was also referred out to Western <coughs> Connecticut Council of Governments. Comments were submitted by West Cog on May 4th. It was referred out to Connecticut DEEP. We received comments from DEEP on May 25th. And Rick Talamelli of our office on behalf of the Environmental Protection Commission submitted comments for the record this afternoon. Uh, those comments are in front of you this evening, dated May 30th. Um, Pam Geary from the Department of Parks and Rec is here with her team. Uh, to present the application and answer any questions you may have. Fantastic. Pam, are you going to present? Pam? Really? The paid guy is going to do it. There you go. <clears throat> Welcome, sir. Just state your name and affiliation for the record. Dan Biggs. I'm with Weston Sampson, consultant for the town on this project. Welcome, sir. Um, so as uh, Fred mentioned, we're looking to have a six paddle court installed at Wee Beach adjacent to the existing five. Uh, the area is fairly uh, cleared at this point, and mostly grass. Uh, it would be a raised platform court, just as the five that are there now, uh, about four and a half feet above grade, uh, made out of uh, metal members, steel members, uh, with piles into the ground. Uh, would be heated as and lit, similar to the five that are there now. And um, it's a pretty much, as you see, sixth version. Fantastic. Okay. Um, I only have a couple items that we have to go over to, just for the record, too. I think you're taking out 16 cubic yards of fill, and you're just filtering it, filtering it around the property so it's not going off-site. I believe it's going to just be spread uh, evenly within the park area. And 16 cubic yards, about the size of that table. Yeah, it's barely. Yeah, yeah. that's what I kind of figured. Um, okay, that's that one minor piece. Um, the other piece I'd like you to go over, and, and we're not going to go out. Of, we'll go out of order a little bit. Can you just go over the lighting, which is one of the items, and then the heaters underneath? Are they gas or electric? Um, and are they designed? Are you going to move them out when it floods, or? Whatever they do with the other ones. I'm guessing there's heaters underneath there. Um, so the heaters are actually attached to the side. Um, well, I can bring up Rob Coster here from the supplier if you need more questions. Uh, but the improvements of this product over the generations is that they're attached on the side. Uh, we have entertained that possibly of having a quick connect or disconnect. So it meant that a major storm were to come, that the tanks could be removed uh, from the location if a large storm surge were to come. Are they and gas or, or electric? They are, they're gas. Okay. The tanks are gas for the heaters. Um, and then there are light fixtures similar to what's there now. Um, I can pass around. We have a cut sheet of a yep. luminaire uh, fixture, LED fixtures now. Uh, I don't know if you have LEDs now at the current pad courts, but a new modern fixture for uh, dark sky compliance, as well as keeping the lighting onto the courts themselves and not spraying to adjacent uses. Okay, and how tall are they off the court surface? Are they 16 or 12 or 10? I'm going to guess, but I'll lean to Rob and Pam, if you recall, light fixture heights. He, well, why don't you answer for him since he's not here? Um, as mentioned, it's going to be 20 feet above the surface of the courts, which okay. is approximately the height of the netting or the fencing around the pallet itself. So that's the same with the other ones, right? Correct. Okay. Um, so the heaters are gas, and you have the ability to take them out if a flood's going to happen. And you would have done that on the other five courts, not just the new sixth court, right? Um, we are only making improvements to the sixth court. I don't recall if the other five courts have that capability. They have a different uh, heating system, which I believe is uh, mounted below, beneath 
uh, right. with limited <clears throat> access beneath the courts themselves. So okay. these are a little more easily accessible uh, around the perimeter attached to the side of the, the skirt, we would call it. Okay, and then the last one that I think I have at this point is, are there any, do you know what the hours are of operation there? And are they changing off from what they are today? Um, I'm gonna go on, we're not, are we changing hours? No. Uh, hours are going to remain as they currently are for the other five courts. And do you know what those hours are? <laughs> Close the time. Close the time. 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. Okay. 8 a.m. to 10, 10 p.m. Okay. Because that always goes in the special permit. We ask about hours and lights and timing and whatnot. Um, and it's built up on piers. The piers are going to be in the water. It's four feet above the flood zone. So. And flood resistant per the requirements of the it, area. I mean, Middlesex Club's got the same exact thing. Their paddle courts are in the flood zone. When it flooded a bunch of years ago, I was on the board. <coughs> the heaters might, you know, the technology is better. So I get it. It's pretty simple. Any questions from you gentlemen over here? No, I'm good. They're all good. Would anybody in the general population like to speak to this application? Pam Geary is very quiet tonight. I'm surprised. Good. Um, I guess with that said, we entertain a motion to close the hearing. Jeff makes a motion. Look at for a second. Adam makes a second. All in favor? We will. Um, we may deliberate this tonight, right? I don't know. Depending on timing. Uh, if not, it's going to be at a subsequent meeting, and then we'll get a resolution after that. Um, but it's pretty straightforward. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Let's do it. Uh, Joe Candace wasn't here. Oh, which time I was one here? We didn't get it. Joe Candace. Okay. Okay, next item on the, on the agenda is landfilling and regrading application number 543 A's and Apple. Uh, Michael, I can never pass the last names. I apologize, Michael. Michelle. Michelle. Michael and Michelle at 142 Near Water Lane proposed to excavate and regrade portions of the property to accommodate the construction of additions to the existing single family residence and create a level rear yard area and perform related site development activities. The 0 0.43 plus or minus acre subject property is located on the east side of New Water Lane, approximately 340 feet south of its intersection with Juniper <coughs> Road, and is shown on assessor's map number 57 is lot 24 in the R1 zone. From so which I am recusing myself. Okay. Who's so going to recuse himself? So we have still four people for a quorum. This is a house that's on New Water Lane as you're going into the bay. It's before you get into the bay on the left hand side and we're going to see what they're going to do here who's representing what fred yeah so um this uh design has been uh designed in performance with section 850 of the regulations under landfilling excavation and regrading uh, this is an after the fact permit uh, the house has been under construction for about a year or a year and a half. Uh, many of you have probably noticed it. Um, uh, it's up on a hill, right? Yeah. Uh, down on near Water Lane uh, before you get to the beach. Um, the proposal is to regrade the northeastern portion of the property uh, as well as grading that was done in connection with the additions to the existing residence on the western side of the residence. Um, the application was referred out to Joe Canis of Ty and Bond. The commission received comments uh, back from him on May 16th. And uh, Mr. John Leiden, uh, the applicant's representative, is here tonight to present the application and answer any questions that the commission may have. Fantastic. John, welcome, sir. John Morris. Great, thanks. It's been a long time. Sorry. State nice your name, you and a name and affiliation for the record. Welcome. My name is John Lydon of the Law Office of John Lydon from Stanford for the applicant, Michael Michelle. Fantastic. Thank and you. Um, I have with us tonight uh, Phil Candido of PMC Construction and um, Bob Smarsley from Soundview Surveyors and Engineers. Okay. Of uh, Greenwich Art Surveyors and Engineers. They're not 
uh, going to make any prepared remarks, but they're here if you have questions that I can't answer. And um, staff has summed it up in the notice that was read, sums it up, so I won't repeat what's been said. And um, generally, so we, what's the effective area now that we're working on? The rear piece again? I believe it's the entire site. We, there was regrading and excavation at the front portion of the um, west side. And then moving east, there's regrading there to, to level an area for a yard area. Um, we've also taken down a good portion of the existing structure. And we propose uh, to construct an addition that's been more or less framed out and constructed. So uh, I've worked over the last time runs by a couple months with Mr. Donay and um, also through a good part of that time um, interacted with an attorney, Amy Zebatakis, who's here tonight, um, who represents one of the neighbors. That's so um, we believe we've satisfied concerns of staff. We had a meeting with staff and the zoning enforcement officer. Um, was part of that meeting and uh, just to try to get aligned. I was new to the project, find out with staff what the issues were, try to work through them. Um, one issue that, that's, that was initially part of this application was a rooftop deck. Although we believe that complied with zoning and didn't hear otherwise, it seemed to raise eyebrows. Um, the neighbors uh, preferred that it not be there and uh, we'd like to move this along, hopefully get an approval, so we withdrew that portion. So we have revised plans that were submitted today that remove that rooftop deck. And um, these are, for the record, plans from the engineers that, that make sister changes. How many cops did you bring? I was advised we just needed one, so it is just one. Okay. Right, there's only uh, I asked for them to bring one copy for the record. Uh, the only change uh, to these plans, from what I understand from speaking with John earlier, is that the rooftop deck has uh, been removed and the stairs up to the deck have been removed from the site plan. Otherwise, everything remains the same. Is this the one you sent us at 6.36 p.m.? Mm, no, it is not. Uh, this, I believe you're seeing for the first time. I'm happy to pass this around if you'd like to see it. There was a stairway on your prior plan that's been removed. So you can see the footprint, so to speak, of that. I should also say our certificate of mailing should be in the file. We, we notified the neighbors. I um, spoke with... Uh, one neighbor who um, asked if we'd like support, um, we respectfully declined, said we're trying to keep it simple and left it at that. I did not hear from any neighbors in opposition. Um, you know, other than I won't call it opposition, my interaction with attorneys of Atakas. The only question is, it did, when they, it's an after the fact application. Do you know what happened prior to the fact or why it wasn't? I, I don't know the details, Mr. Chair, but um, my understanding is a stop work order had been issued and we stopped. And I gather that you have seen the result of that stop. So um, it's, right. I don't think special? we violated the terms of that. We've stopped since that point in time. Yeah, that, that's correct. Two, two stop work orders were, were issued, one by the building department, one by the zone enforcement officer. There was initially some concerns with respect to the height of the structure, whether it complied with the maximum building height requirements. And there was a second uh, question or concern with respect to encroachment of the existing residents into the side yard setback. And with the improvements that were being made to the house, the question was asked whether a new variance would be needed to address that encroachment into the setback. Um, we did speak with town council on that, and they opined um, several months ago at this point that because no additional volume was being added within the setback area, that a new variance would not be required. That's it by 
fairly extensive analysis of the height um, and we interacted with staff on that when, when I came on board the determination about the variance had been made but nonetheless it was discussed at our initial staff meeting and, um, the CEO appeared to concur and had done an analysis it wasn't a knee-jerk had been studied yeah no we got a survey it's, it's the maximum heights 30 feet you're 29 point Eight one feet, so you get 0 0.09 feet to, to spare. That's part of the width of a shingle. Um, any questions from Adam, Mike? I'm good. No, good. Okay. good. Okay. Would anybody, the general population, like to speak to this uh, application? I see Miss Abitakis in the house. Welcome, Amy. Thanks, Joe. Good evening, Amy Zaptakis, Ruchi Law Group, on behalf of the Markhams at 5 Juniper. It's a lot directly to the rear of this property. Um, so, um, as Mr. Lydon indicated, there have been a number of conversations between um, himself and, and, my, and me regarding my client's concerns with the project. Um, you know, I just want to say for the record, there's, there has been mention made of the fact that a stop work order was issued. There was a lot of work done on this lot without a permit. So we do ask, um, especially as, as noted, the building height is very close, even as designed. So we do ask that, um, you know, very careful work is done as far as the as-builds. Um, further to that, um, we did ask, and we appreciate that the applicant removed the roof deck from the proposal. And we would ask that it be a condition of approval that no roof deck um, be put on this property by the applicant or any future owner of the property. Sure. Um, but you know, that being said, um, my clients do want to see this project completed. Um, it's they, they're staring at a blue tarp right now. So um, with those changes, I think we're we're okay with this moving forward. We just do ask that there be a lot of care and careful um, consideration given as this project moves forward that it's done properly. Yeah. You didn't submit a letter on this one, did you? I did not. Okay. I, 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 I didn't see it, but I knew it would be in trouble. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Amy. Thanks. Would anybody else like to speak to this application? Uh, yes. Do I have to stand? Because I'm on crutches. Uh, no, you don't have to stand. A <laughs> microphone can pick it up, and I bet you the cameras here will get you smiling right there. Thanks. We're the uh, Markham's neighbors. We're three juniper And what's your name, sir? My name is Robert Wachowski, and this is my wife, Tamsin Wachowski. Welcome. Thank you. And <clears throat> we um, uh, second everything that uh, Ms. Zabataka said in her remarks. This has been an incredibly burdensome project on the neighbors, the way it was done initially on the cheap, uh, without permits, and in a way that made our lives about as miserable as you can possibly. So we would, and I came tonight to make sure that there were no variances being granted for this project, because we would oppose that. Um, we think that, um, I'm very happy to hear that the roof deck is gone. That's important. We also heard that the uh, house had initially been planned to have a basement crawl space, and in contravention of the submitted plan, a full basement was built. So we think that's kind of indicative, whether or not that's legal, we think that's indicative of the approach that the owner is taking with respect to his plans and his dealing with the Planning and Zoning Commission and uh, the town of Darien and his neighbors. So um, I see that there's a giant hole in the backyard where the guy's dug out about, you know, an area of rock up 
10 feet deep by 20 feet long, 7 feet wide, and now he's basically saying we're going to put that back up and make a yard. Dug the whole thing without permission. And I, I just, I guess I don't have a particular ask other than the one that Ms. Zabatakis had that the Planning and Zoning Commission and Building Department very carefully um, follow this project from here to ensure that uh, it's done in accordance with law and with the submitted and approved plans. We appreciate that. We never saw this before, ever, right? No, we have not. Yeah, so I, when it came to our attention, that's when stop work orders go. It came to the office's attention. Right. I mean, we drive around. I mean, I drive around town all the time, but I don't, we don't we don't issue permits on every single house that's that's built or constructed or renovated. Always select ones, and there's, there's criteria for that. But I appreciate your concern. Thank you. Know, we're on it. Uh, would anybody else like to speak to this application? No. You want to, any closing comments, John? I mean, what I would just ask is, I mean, I know you're on board now. I've known you for a long time. Just keep the neighbors involved. That's the biggest thing. I mean, nobody, yes. I mean, you know, that nobody likes surprises. No, yes, thank you, and, and we hadn't spoken before, but I'm happy to take your calls, or I can ask Ms. Takas to forward them. But um, we did also discuss that basement issue um, when I first came on board. So anything we've requested is all we're going to to be able to build, and I understand it's a general condition of approval if you grant one that we stick to the plans, but we intend to. And as far as the tarps, I mean, these guys are calling asking, if we get approved, when can we start? So there, there's, and my client is saying the same thing. Great. So, I mean, we've got some credibility we'd like to establish. Um, I've had a good report. It's my first time here working on an application with, with staff. Everything's been cordial, and we've tried to accommodate um, the concerns. and, and um, I've expressed that to my client. You know, we come in looking uphill, let's try to um, work with people and, and get over that if we can. And yep. Hopefully we can. That's fantastic. Thank you, appreciate that. We know who to call. Just make sure you give your contact information to the um, neighbors if you, if you don't Sure, and, and we have no objection to that um, condition if you grant one about no rooftop deck. Yeah, do we, we have to put that on the lane record? Mm, no, it would not go on the land records. Um, we could because the question is, someone comes in three years from now and puts propose a rooftop deck and wall. Yeah, they'd be able to the height, right? Uh, no, it's a deck. Yeah, but you can put it. Yeah, in the I put it in the resolution. Yeah, we, we can certainly put it in the resolution. Um, you know, as, as far as prohibiting any any future property owners. Um, to, from constructing something in the future, you know, if it's... If They'd it's, have to come back for I, a building permit. They would have to come back before a building permit, sure. Um, but if it's not in the deed, then right. it's... They have to back in building permit. If someone pulls the file, they might not right. have seen it. Correct. Okay. But did that make sense? Okay, thank you. With that said, I need to enter a motion to close. Thank you. Mike makes a motion. Adam makes a second. All in favor? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We may deliberate tonight. I think we're going to Thank deliberate you. this on a different day. Uh, make sure we get it. Uh, this one's. Thank you, folks. Thanks, John. Good to see you, man. I think that one's yours, Mike. Okay. <laughs> All right, next up on the agenda is um, <coughs> landfilling and regrading application number 552, Jason and Gina uh, Gromelski at 95 Raymond Street, proposal to construct new additions to the existing single family residence on the property, construct, construction of, of patio, porch, and deck areas with a series of terrace retaining walls expansion of the driveway area and perform related site development activities including regrading of the property and installation of stormwater management. The zero point, um, the, the 1.85 plus one acre subject property is located on the west side of Raymond Street, approximately 560 feet north of its intersection with Little Brook Road and is shown on assessor's map number 
33 as lot 10A in the R1 zone. Um, you're going to tell us what's going on, but as one note, the, the um, acreage, there's discrepancy between the legal notice and what's on the surveys. Does that matter? Mm. The survey says it's 1.6787. Well, this is 1.85. It doesn't, it, it doesn't hit any press special buttons. Right. No. Did the it, thing change? It, it shouldn't. It shouldn't make a difference. Okay. This is a flag lot that's off of Raymond Street in the back. Um, Fred, what do we got? Mm, this, so 17 Nickerson is off, is off of Nearwater Lane, not off of Raymond. We're doing Raymond right now. Um, oh, I'm oh. sorry. I'm we're doing, sorry. We're doing 95 um, Raymond. We're doing 95 Raymond. Yeah, so 95 Raymond was withdrawn today. Oh. And... Uh, Right. It was <laughs> problem solved. Yeah. Yeah. The application was withdrawn today. Uh, we can we can move on to move on move on to 17 Nickerson. All right. Stick, stick it around. No. You'll leave it again. What? Yeah, leaving again. I'll be back. Yeah. Oh, I. Right. Okay. Read the record. Okay. So, with that said, 95 Raymond Street's been withdrawn. Um, I'm sure we'll see it back some other day at some point in time. It's late. All right, next on the agenda is continuation of public hearing regarding coastal site plan review number 372, fudge stem prevention application number 436, landfilling and regrading application number four, uh, 544, Mitchell and Kerry Ross at 17 Nickerson Lane, proposed to, to construct a new six bedroom single family house on a now vacant lot, construction of a new driveway and parking court, patio area and terraced areas, at a pool and perform related site development activities, including the regrading of the property, installation of stormwater management. Uh, the project will establish new connections to public water and sewer. The 0 0.98 plus or minus acre subject property is located on the southwest side of Nickerson Lane, approximately 750 feet west of its intersection with Nearwater Lane, and is shown on assessor's map number 52 as lot number nine in the R1 zone. The hearing was opened on May 23rd, 2023. So that's why you did not get a whole lot of stuff in your packets on this one. But today we got a series of interviews. And I am recusing myself. Thank you, Chair Vice Chairman Riley. <laughs> Thank you. See you we later. Will, we will see you in the hallway. Yes, indeed. Um, okay, today we got a bunch of different items on this. And I think we just got another item two seconds ago on this. Yeah, that's correct. Um, what do we got, this Fred? application was submitted to the Planning and Zoning Department back in January. Uh, they've been before the Environmental Protection Commission for the past several months on a number of issues which uh, the applicant's representative will uh, cover and describe this evening. Uh, the application was submitted in conformance with Section 810, Section 820, and Section 850 of the Darien Zoning Regulations under Coastal Site Plan Review, Flood Damage Prevention, and Landfilling and Regrading. Uh, the application was referred out to Joe Canis of Tie and Bond. Uh, his most recent comments are dated May 17th. Uh, was referred out to Matt Pop, who was hired as a peer reviewer for both the Environmental Protection Commission and the Planning and Zoning Commission uh, from an environmental and uh, CAM review perspective. His most recent comments for the record are dated May 18th, um, May or May 17th, May 17th, I should say. Okay, yep. Um, Rick Talamelli of our office also has submitted comments on the uh, comments for the record on behalf of the Environmental Protection Commission. His most recent comments are dated May 18th and uh, was also referred out to Connecticut Deep. Um, they submitted comments for the record dated February 6th and their most recent comments of May 17th. So um, we forwarded and included all of these most recent comments to commission members over the past several days, um, and you have hard copies in front of you this evening as well. 
The ones that we got at 636, what was the attachment to that? Correct. Those what, were, was, what was the attachment? So those were the, those were the comments from Joe Canis, from Matt Pop, and Rick Talamelli, as well as Connecticut Deep. All of those most recent comments that I just noted. Okay. Those are the hard copies you have. As those well. are the hard copies in front of you as well. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, that, maybe that's why I didn't. I didn't print them twice. Oh, I didn't print out the site plan pool red line. Is that what we just have? Right. So print based out. on the proceedings through the Environmental Protection Commission over the past uh, several months, the plans that were just distributed to you this evening. Um, by Kurt Lowenstein reflect the most uh, recent understanding by the Environmental Protection Commission with respect to essentially cutting back the project. So from the original plans that were submitted in January to the plans that you have in front of you now, the house was cut back by about 10%. It was moved further away from Holly Pond and the on-site wetlands. The in-ground swimming pool was reduced in size. Um, and there's also uh, some modifications to uh, the landscape plan as well uh, that Kurt so, will describe uh, tonight as well. All right, um, so these plans are dated May 2nd, 2023. Yes. Okay. Yeah. The properties in the AE 14 flood zone. Um, and like I said, Kurt Lowenstein from Landtech, the applicant's representative, is uh, here this evening to present the application and answer any questions that the commission may have. It's likely the commission will need to continue this hearing this evening to another night to uh, hear from Matt Pop and allow the EPC to close their hearing on, uh, I think it's June 7th. June 7th. I think so. Yeah, yeah so okay. EPC's not closed? Yeah, so okay. EPC public hearing is still open. We anticipate that public hearing will be closed on June 7th. So let's get it out. Welcome, sir. Good evening, everyone. For the record, Kurt Lowenstein, licensed professional engineer in Connecticut with Lantech offices out of Westport, Connecticut here. Um, you got a team with you, too, with these guys? I do, indeed. Fantastic. I have, from right to left, Mitch Ross, who's the property owner, Doug Vanderhorn, Vanderhorn Architects, Richard Nichols, Vanderhorn Architects, they're the project architect on the project. Fantastic. Um, Welcome, everybody. Well, as Fred described, I won't go back through that chronology, but we've been in front of EPC a number of times now over the last few months, working back and forth with them to um, get the project more into conformance with where they feel comfortable approving. The crux of the revisions left that are, were in flux and finishing, we anticipate this week being done, and again, June 7th being the closing of EPC. Um, the pool, so the plan that I passed out to everybody that has the red line on it, last EPC hearing, there were the original pool, as you may recall if you've seen the original plan, same plans that you were submitted to you back in January, had the triangular shaped pool, which you can see underneath of the red line plan in front of you. Um, we agreed at the last hearing to scale back the shape and the size of the pool to the red outline. It's still an infinity edge pool. It still does have a lower trough area and then the upper swimming area, but um, the shape, again, the shape and size uh, has been reduced. Primarily, the, there was a concern from Joe Canis of Tie and Bond, which he raised in his first and his second um, review letter. Uh, in regards to wave action and how it may interact and potentially displace and cause adverse impact to neighbors. In doing that, he requested that an analysis be done in conversations with him by reducing, it was really the point of the pool that he was concerned with. He, so we came to an agreement that by reshaping it so you have a more traditional face that any uh, type of flooding event will interact with, as well as pulling it back so it's almost entirely out of the flood zone now, eliminated his concern um, and he's comfortable with this uh, as, as proposed. Obviously, 
we'll be finalizing these plans and you'll have a full set of all the original application materials updated with the final plan. That includes the landscaping plan, which I'll get into uh, in a minute. But um, Just show the flood line with your finger on where it is, because doesn't the spot, doesn't the flood line go through the spot? It, it looks does. Like, it looks so like the, the spot concern was, right? was where the pool here, because of the proximity to this property line, Okay. Now where the flood line interacts with the pool is all the way over here, nearly double the distance. And that, in my professional opinion, and Joe agreeing with that, um, will not cause the waves to be displaced. And it's sufficient space to feel comfortable not needing a whole wave analysis. Um, it's not uncommon to have to think if that was a house and have the interaction with the waves. It just happened to be the proximity he was concerned with the interaction with the adjacent neighbor. So okay. we've alleviated that concern with, with this proposed or uh, revised plan here. And EPC is working with, Cadis is working with both us and EPC. Correct. So if EPC signs off, then we're going to be okay. Yes. And, and I would the imagine I mean, Joe the commission may, may have some additional questions with respect to the flood damage prevention permit but um yes great okay just as an aside but really quick you said this thing started in january do we need an extension for the application the application was submitted in january they've they've given us a number of extensions to open the public hearing um there is some time sensitivity involved here uh, the commission will need to close the the public hearing by, I believe, I believe July seventh is the last day that the commission can close the public hearing on the matter. That's a month. Um, about a month, yes. So it's not like last week we had seven such we had twenty four hours. Correct. To close the hearing. Correct. Okay. I'm sorry. There's I tried to make sure it was a little bit there. of time. I know. Okay. It's the this project with how EPC worked, we did not nearly anticipate the length that we've been in front of them. You get Otherwise, close to Holly Pond, uh, man, they get their... Understandably, it's a beautiful resource and, you know, we're certainly sensitive for that, which is why we put in the, you know, all the extra time and effort to get ourselves into a position now that EPC, I feel, is comfortable. Hopefully at the end of tonight, you'll be comfortable pending, obviously, seeing the final plan in front of you. Um, so, like I said, the, the pool was one of the main points of concern with EPC from the last hearing, and then the landscape buffer. Okay. So I'll flip to that. Tell us about the stormwater management system already. Do you have the Coltex inside the flood zone too? The lower Coltex are located within the flood zone. The Coltex that are located at the top of the driveway will be here, those are outside the flood zone. So there's a small system down here right. that will be located below, in, within the flood zone rather, and I'll have a level spreader that will allow overflow. It's all the stormwater here because we're along an area where we're dealing more with water quality than quantity. They are sized for only water quality volume rather than the 50 year storm event, which would be standard for an inland, um, inland property. Okay. So we do meet the regulations for town of Darien in regards to stormwater management. Again, Joe has reviewed this and has not had any um, comment that it's not adequately sized. Um, flood prevention wise, the house is partially in the flood zone, albeit much further away than it was previously. Um, the house is designed to be FEMA compliant, so it will have obviously no basement, but it will have a lower um, crawl space area and a portion of it will have adequate flood venting um, to, you know, based on the enclosed areas for FEMA guidance. Uh, and then coastal resource wise, we have the Holly Pond itself is an estuary and embayment. We do have tidal wetlands on the property. Uh, we have uh, shellfish areas also located in Holly Pond, both that and the estuary and embayment wouldn't be something that would be a direct impact of us um, because we're not proposing anything waterward of the, the tidal wetlands, frankly, 15, 20 feet upland of that other than minor planting. Um, but nonetheless, that is a, the coastal resources that are identified associated with this property. You have the coastal hazard area, which I went through. We are FEMA compliant for the flood zone. 
Um, and then buffer wise, because we do have Holly Pond, obviously a very sensitive resource and tidal wetlands here. That's been the, the last point of discussion with EPC. We've gone back and forth with Matt Pop uh, numerous times in narrowing down the width of this lawn area here, this light area, and the, the types of plantings in the vegetated buffer between the tidal wetlands and the development. So the, what you'll see in the final plan that you'll receive likely later this week, around the corner here, we've narrowed the width and we've eliminated the lawn here. So this will just be stepping stone around the corner. <coughs> and the width of the lawn will be narrowed down from what it is. Other than that, there was a few questions from Matt regarding types of species, more deer tolerant. I would say those would be kind of minor tweaks to the plan, but all in all, I think we've gotten to a point where we anticipate approval or rather closing of the hearing from EPC next week. We're compliant with all the, the coastal site plan, coastal area management standards. Um, our design is compliant with all the zoning standards. Um, so. With that, I'd, I'll turn it over to the commission for any questions that you may have. Okay, so you started, the, the height of the house is 29 feet, based on the way we measure, and you're starting it at, at 17 and a half? The first floor is at 17 and a half, correct. Okay. And what's the base elevation of the, of the land today? Is that 15? Uh, it varies across. If, if you've been out to the site, the upper area where the previous, it, it is vacant now, there was a previous house there um, right. prior to the redevelopment of that area. Um, so it's roughly elevation 19 up top at the high point and then down towards the bottom we're close to, let me just pull this up here, the bottom corner of the house would be around elevation 9 or 10. Right, but I'm, what I'm getting at it was what's the cut and fill? is how much we taken away and how much we have. There's a net 500 cubic yards of cut. Okay. Associated with the with development. None of which is within the flood zone. This right. would be all landward of it and it's predominantly around the if you're looking at the plan this would be the southeast corner uh, where the driveway is. That area to get the bring the driveway down into the garage there. It's quite high where the original pad was, like I said, roughly elevation 18, 19. Uh, so a lot of the cut is in that area. So it was 19, you're taking it down to 16.7, something like that? So you're taking out two and a half feet? Roughly, yeah, and then over, the, over that area. And then the terrace, is the terrace 17 and it goes down to 14? Is that what I'm reading? Uh, the ter yeah, so there's a small upper terrace where you'll step out from the main house a few steps down to the, you know, basically the pool patio and then where the pool and that'll be at 14 and a half. Okay. Um, and so the max height in the area is 30 feet, two, two and a half stories, you're 29 feet. Okay. And then the Caltech system, what portion of the house goes to the north? What portion of the house goes to the south? Is it 50, 50? Is it even, is it, do you know what goes north? What Roughly, goes south? I'd say it's more one third, two thirds. Because the, the system up at the top is more driveway oriented. It does receive a portion of the, uh, of the house, I'd say about a third. And the remainder of that and the patio uh, and terrace area is collected. There's a series of uh, slim trench drains around the edge of the pool coping that will pick up the runoff generated by the terrace and the patio and that will be, as well as the roof leaders from roughly two-thirds of the house will be routed to the rear uh, coltec that's on the lower side of the pool. Okay, so you get five coltecs up top, right, and the bottom we have, what, four? Uh, there's eight down below. Uh, okay, I believe you. I don't see where it says eight. It's on, it's on uh, C1, not the red, different one. It's the different one. Exactly. More house and then you also have the patio as well that goes into that. Okay. So the height's okay, the the, the call texts are okay. The and the, the you said the net's five hundred cubic yards, where is that you're taking that off site? Yes, that will be taken off site. Okay. Okay, I'm good for now. You guys want to go? Any questions, Mike? 
Uh, <clears throat> just a general comment. Could, I know you're sort of still in process, but could you make sure all the plans reflect the latest plan? All the your your pool there is still the old. Rectangle. Oh yes, this is the set that's currently in front of EPC. Correct. And I apologize. I know it's very confusing getting it late and it not being the final plan. Uh, but yeah, the final plans will all be incorporated with the with the pool plan. Good. Because th this red line stamp one is dated to the right. That's a thirty. Exactly. That's that's what will ultimately be integrated into the final yeah. set. And each, and it obviously reflected with the ENS plan as well as the landscape plan. Okay, Adam, you good? Okay, Jack. Yeah. Um, I just would like to hear about the house from the architects. You guys are here, right? Sure. You built a yeah. six-bedroom house. It's pretty kind of cool. Hit me with it. You can leave that there. We'll, oh, these guys put their stuff on top. You can use your own bolts, you're fine. Hi there, uh, Richard Nichols uh, from Van Horn Architects. So you can well, see here the, uh, the front of the house, the street side, and the rear of the house, which will be facing the water. Um, and uh, so you can see the elevation here where, uh, where the cut is that Kurt was just mentioning um, to yep. get into the garage <coughs> with the first floor at uh, 17 and a half feet. Um, did, did we get sets of these plans last go around? I didn't bring my packet from last week. Mm, no, I don't believe that the architectural plans were included in the original set. Okay. The, we can certainly have those submitted as part yeah, of the record. Certainly. Yeah, certainly. Yeah, for sure, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So keep going. Yeah. Um, How many square feet is this whole thing? Um, that always seems to be a surprise question to architects. <laughs> and I, yeah. I, it, appraisers is the first thing they ask. Yeah, yeah. Because it's 500 bucks a foot times the square footage. It's, it's <laughs> not rocket science. Yeah. But the, um, the footprint of the house at the uh, exterior of walls is uh, 5,000 square feet. Um, and that is. That's including uh, this terrace here. Um, so what's what's the air conditioned square footage of the house? It's not ten thousand um, feet. Oh, it's not. Do you remember? It's, it's, I it's, think it's under seven. That's what I was. Thinking. But you have to yeah. speak for him since we don't. Yeah. Oh yes, he, he doesn't have a microphone. microphone. That's yeah, good. under seven, uh, be between six and seven thousand square feet of air conditioned space. If you can get us that size, it would be great. We'd like to put that on the on the application. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So it's, we're going to say it's a 6,900 square foot house. Six bedrooms. How many bathrooms? I believe we have um, six plus two halves. Yeah. So, uh, That's another hard question. Yeah, six and two halves. So I don't know if that equals seven bathrooms or not. <laughs> So it's uh, six, six and, and two, two half halves. bathrooms. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, and right now it's you're you're connecting to water and sewer, right? Correct. Yes. There's nothing. There's nothing there now. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I imagine you guys know the sort of the history of this site. It was originally a house on the covering the line with the adjoining lot a number of years ago. Um, so, and now obviously it is not there. Right, because um, it's a pretty big lot, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. So, um, essentially, you can see the uh, this is the first floor plan. Uh, two car garage. Yeah, two car. It was originally planned to be a three car garage, but um, to to reduce the square footage and more importantly, get away from the tidal wetlands for the EPC, we decided to go down to two cars. Okay, and do we have to get a variance on this one because it's point nine eight acres and a nine and a. In a one-acre zone? No, there's no variance required there. Yeah, I, I believe that uh, that was sorted out a number of years ago. I think the originally it would have been a full acre, but the I think the high water mark was revised at some time okay. previously. So, so you lost a tiny bit. That's right. why. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah. Any questions? Please go. Okay. You good? Okay. Would anybody? You're good. I'm all good. And you're good? Okay. 
All good. Would anybody in the general population like to speak to this application? We do have a record on file from a Ms. Amy Zappa, Texas, that Lucy wrote to. Yep. Um, I got that today. It's dated May 17th. Yeah, we circulated the, uh, the letter it. that uh, Attorney Zabatak has submitted uh, on behalf of the neighbors that she represents. Okay. Welcome, sir. Just state your name and affiliation for the sure. record. I'm uh, Alec Wigan. I live at 14 Nickerson Lane. Okay, welcome, sir. Thank you. Directly opposite the, the lot in question. Um, and uh, my concern, first off, I just want to state that it's a lot and it should have a home on it. So that's not where I am. <laughs> Say what? It's a lot and it should have a home on it. Yeah, so, oh, yeah. Uh, right but I, uh, since I live across the street, I do have some concerns. One, one would just simply be, I don't know what the legal thing is, but it's, I would call it the ridge line, you know, how high the, that house is permissible to be. Um, and I just want to make sure that somebody's paying attention to that because yep. historically some of those things have not been paid attention to. Yeah, that's uh, why I asked that question. And the other thing is uh, Holly Pond is a treasure um, and it supports an incredible uh, amount of diversity of wildlife. I mean, they're mink on Holly Pond. I mean, you know, yeah, really mink, you know, and other things. Um, so when you were describing the, um, I guess you call them the cultex, yep. and that maybe 60% of them are in floodwaters, um, I just was curious, because during hurricanes, and by the way, I've lived in that house since 55, so I've seen a lot of hurricanes. Yep. Uh, during hurricanes, you get floods and you get rain simultaneously. So if the cultex are supposed to grab runoff, they flat out can't work if they're flooded. So, and that is the predominant circumstance during a hurricane. So I just want to put that forward to whomever might be interested and, and maybe can, you know, knowledgeably comment on that, but it seems to me that um, the purpose for, for which they're intended gets obviated under the conditions which you kind of want them need, need the most. So that's it, 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 yeah, it, it seems like an oxymoron to put a flood prevention thing in a flood zone. Well, it's the runoff yeah. thing. They, how can you run water into something that's submerged? Sorry. Um, it doesn't, I don't think it works from a physics point of view. So well, the way it was explained to me is the coltex are designed for stormwater management, not flood water management. Yeah. Right, I understand that, but flood, I mean, storm waters can't go in below sea level. And if the sea level, the flood water comes up over the cultex, Correct. it That's obviates the ability for the cultex to work. The storm water management system is, is designed, as Kurt noted earlier, to treat the water quality volume. No. So it's not intended to hold and store water because of the property's location in the watershed. So, because it's in the lower third of the watershed and directly adjacent to Holly Pond, the stormwater and flooding will flow directly into, into Holly Pond. You try to get it off-site as soon as possible. Yes, instead of detaining and holding back water. I, that's, that's, I understand that, but I, it's a little new I believe from a, uh, a water pressure point of view, you can't drain into something that's submerged. Right. And so the idea of saying they work during, they control runoff during a flood <coughs> seems to me to not make any sense. Now, I'm not an engineer, so We're I'm, gonna have him answer that I'll question. I'll accede to the greater knowledge, but I just, I just think class of how that works. Put them below in the flood zone. Anyway. Do you wanna just answer that real quick? I mean, we've had, We've, we've approved them before. Sometimes engineers give a great answer. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they don't ask the question. Oh, so I will. Why don't you give it a shot? I will do my best. Kurt Lowenstein, for the record. Um, so the, <clears throat> the Coltex, when we're designing them, or any stormwater system, whether it's underground or above ground, for a water quality, it's a water quality storm event. Think of it that way. If a flooding event comes in, such as the, you know, a Sandy, that's what would be considered like a hundred year flood elevation. You're talking seven, eight inches of rain falling in a 24 hour period. 
the systems that we've designed here and any engineer that develop or designs anything along the coast that's in a tidally influenced area, those systems are designed in smaller storm events. So you get uh, a short rain amount, or even if you get a larger rain amount, it's really only intended to store the first inch of runoff over the entire impervious area. So that's where the treatment comes. It's assumed by the regulations and by the design that when you're dealing with flood events, a 100-year flood event, 25, 50, 75, anyone beyond the what would be the water quality event, which is about an, a one, you know, less than a one-year storm event, that water will run off, meaning that the systems will be full and it can run off. Run Again, off into Holly Pond. Into Holly Pond. Again, we're, the first flush, meaning the first inch, is considered the water that has the most potential to contain contaminants. In general, roofs, patios, those areas are not high contributors to contaminants regardless of what your end source is, Holly Pond or, you know, your neighbor's property. Driveways are the main concern, so that's why the system is located further away, gives more opportunity. So if it does overflow, it's going over vegetated areas before it gets to the resource. So that's kind of the, the main difference. It's in, during, a, a hundred, you know, during a major flood event, the systems are not designed to treat or detain anything because they'll be full. There's water everywhere, essentially. Right. I hope that... Clear tries to address your question. Kurt um, mentioned how hot the roofs are and the patios in the first inch, and that's part of the purpose is correct. to cool that water. Thermal cooling is another component of water quality. If you read the stormwater manual, that is one of the main components. Uh, the hot island effect, um, those types of things do. So the hot water that. comes off the roof, goes into the Caltech system. And it's able to cool rather than going directly into the pond as a heated water source, which is, as everybody knows, is a, not a good thing. Great. It's potential for impact that way. One other item, while well, I got you, can you, did, there was a whole bunch of discussion about the walls that are being built around this. Is there anything we need to know about that? Uh, the main concern that I believe the neighbors had, at least to the south, was the, originally the wall was proposed on the property line. Um, in the rendition that you're looking at and included in the final as well, we've pulled that wall. It's about 18 inches off the property line. The main concern was that to build a foundation for it, were we going to need rights from the neighbor to construct that? The answer is it could be built on the property line without needing rights. Oh, across I've seen the other side because you got a mace on both sides or something like that? Well, it depends on the type of wall you use. If you were using, say, a modular block wall, if you've seen with the large plastic geogrid that has to go back a fair distance. This is a cut on our side, meaning that they won't see the wall on, the, on Mitch's property side where the garage is. You'll see a wall face. Okay. So to hold that back, if you had a large geogrid, it would need to extend onto the neighbor's property. You would need rights for that. That's not the only type of wall you could build. There's cast in place. There's gravity blocks that can be used. There's many ways to skin a cat in this and without needing to seek rights onto the neighbor's property or encroach. And so what's the tallest wall you have on the property? The tallest wall is roughly four feet in a small section. Okay. It's in that area. Um, so around once the, you break four feet, it's gotta be engineered, right? Yeah. Fred? Yes, yep. correct. It'll need fall protection. So the sections that are beyond, well, less than four feet, anything beyond 30 inches, we generally recommend having fall protection. Um, exterior walls, there's not a lot of clear guidance on that, but that's kind of the general rule of thumb. 30 inches and higher, you want to have fall protection. So the wall where it is at, you know, three and a half, four feet in height, will obviously need a building permit associated with it. Structural engineer will have to provide stamp plans. Um, at this point, we don't have a structural on board. Typically, that doesn't happen until after the zoning permit. Um, EPC has asked for the copy of those plans. If your commission would like that as well, we certainly could provide it. They'll yeah, have to be done um, at some point anyway. Okay. And then just for the record, or the fence around the pool, that's all regulated by the building department. That's four feet or whatever it is. It's going to be attached to the house. Okay. Thank you. Would anybody else like to speak to this application? Please. Welcome. Just state your name and affiliation for the record, if you don't mind. Uh, yeah, my name is Peter Enkema van Dijk. That's my wife, Yvette Enkema van Dijk. And we live 
on 19 Nicholson Lane. Perfect. So the house um, basically north of, of, of 17 Nicholson Lane. I just had a few questions and, and clarifications. Um, um, had the gentleman from Lantex said there was a house on this property. There was really a house on um, 10 Nicholson Lane and 17 Nicholson Lane. That used to be one property. And maybe a third or a quarter was on 17 Nicholson Lane. The rest was on 10 Nicholson Lane. And when the then owners, the youths, sold the house, a lot of people looked at this property because it looked to be uh, two acres, but it was just under. It was 1.95, and uh, it couldn't be split. So all the people that came to the town were told, you can't be split. And then uh, the Rosses bought it, and the split was denied. They appealed it, was denied again. Then they went to Connecticut court, and then it was approved. So that's the history. That's why it's smaller than one acre. Okay. Um, I Thank just had a question about, uh, we appreciate that the house is smaller now, but I think I heard that the, that it's out of the flood zone now. But the latest drawing I got, the flood zone still goes through a part of the house, or maybe I misunderstand it. No, it does. You're right. Okay. So that is correct. Okay. And then a little bit through the pool. Yes. Okay. Yep. All right. So what we would, would what we would like to see is we, we're close now, and yeah, in, in our opinion, this 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 lot should have never never been split. And I think the town has the same opinion. That's why they denied it twice. Had that at least we have good screening, but on on this side, right? Between and 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 I think also for for for. Uh, the people that live in 10 in Nickers Lane, that there's good screening with trees because we have a lot of trees there now. This property was a beautiful property with a lot of trees and yeah, uh, some trees were cut down that weren't supposed to be cut down. So I want to make sure that the screening between our house and 17 Nickers Lane is as on this landscaping. I think they were going to talk about it, but I don't think that really happened. I yeah? think we have a, a landscape plan on this one, don't we? Yes, and yeah. as Kurt noted, the, uh, the, the newest landscape plan is being finalized as we speak and will be provided by, to the commission uh, for the continuation of the hearing. Can someone speak to it tonight on the existing landscaping plan? We'll wait till he's done. If you're, it's still your time. Go ahead. Yeah, I think that, 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 that those were the main points I want to make about the flood zone, that it's still... Huh? And, 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 and the landscaping, because that wasn't really talked about. So we would like to see the, uh, the latest version, um, which trees are going to stay, uh, and if there's still a good screening between the houses. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, watch the, yeah, watch the landscaping plan for us. I saw that earlier. I whiffed on it. I got the architect that makes the landscaping. <laughs> so there will be trees coming down for the development of the property mainly within the footprint of the house itself and the few that fall in the patio area um, the existing trees along the, the vegetated buffer will remain other than there's a couple that are in bad shape um, a few uh, old cherry and I believe a, an old ash tree that's that will risk um, safety to the new development. But otherwise, to the north, to the gentleman who just spoke's point, his property is here to the north. There is a, a fairly dense wooded area there now where we're not proposing to take down any trees, and ultimately in the, the final plan, we're actually adding a few more trees into that. Initially, we had some hesitation on adding, introducing new trees into that wooded area it is an established area with trees and as you you know more trees is better isn't always the case because you can overcrowd an area which can cause the existing trees to be stressed and ultimately die so we did find a way to add a, a few more in there but the main point being and to address your concern is this entire wooded area here that is there as you're looking at the property now is going to remain well, let's just read what the plan said. It says, wooded area to remain, remove invas invasives to release 
over story trees? Is that, is that what it's like? Correct. So there's there are some invasives on the property, multi-floor rows, garlic mustard, things of that nature that you see all throughout Connecticut. Yep. Um, again, this is something that will be part of the final package. We're finalizing it now. There's an invasive species removal plan that will be in there that outlines the removal of from the understory which allows the existing native plants there um, trees included to flourish invasives the reason that they are invasive is because they outcompete the native species um, so that will be coming down that'll further enhance this wooded buffer and again there'll be at the start of construction the silt fence that will be put up will act as the limit of disturbance which will provide protection for all of this existing uh, wooded buffer to the north. So the neighbors will see landscape guys in there digging and cutting and pulling out stuff. But most of that stuff that they're digging and cutting out is uh, invasives. Potentially, there. I wouldn't say many. It will be more by hand right, or, or potential. Yeah, there will be some activity in there, but it won't be taking down trees. It's There's not no guys with bucket trucks and chainsaws. Correct. There's no trees proposed to come down in that wooded area, other than if there was a tree that had fallen, they would remove um, any fallen trees, but no trees that are that are standing. Okay. And that's part of the record. Okay, thank you. And is, is there some kind of guarantee? You have to go back to, to the, you want to ask, okay. you can ask at the, at the um, podium, please. And I take it you're the wife? Yeah, Welcome. my name is Yvette Inkema van Dijk. Welcome. Peter's wife, thank you. 19 Nickerson Lane. Um, is there a, po um, a chance that the trees will be labeled? Which one will stay? Because we have some history, and I just want to make sure that what that we n because how do we know, right? We live next door. If these tree people come in, we have no clue because I would like to see which trees will stay. Okay. Because we have a clear view of that property all along here the fence we, right. we get very close uh yeah you're on the top side right oh but you right. can see the back yeah you're up there right yeah, yeah they, my history with this stuff is is right yeah, sorry sorry yeah, yeah right yeah. your name's on the plant it my history of this stuff a lot of times is that the the neighbors don't want to see the new house and the new house people don't want to see the neighbors <laughs> so that's usually the case where they stay um i know um the head architect, he's very into plants himself. Um, I don't know if you if you label trees that are coming down or you label trees that are keeping. Is there something you can do to accommodate that? In the field? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think we could. I don't see why we, why we couldn't do that. Before. It's it's do one or the other. If there's you know if there's a hundred staying, I would. Mean, and the ones 10 that come stay. down. Yeah, I mean we can certainly flag the ones that are staying with ribbons. Um, the easiest way that I find it to be is at the time of construction, you have a site meeting with all, with the, the town and the contractor, the silt fence is established at that point, and then anything beyond that is a, a no-go. There as far as no encroachment, no removal of trees. In the interim, in your interest, we can see what we can do to, to go out there and flag. There's a lot of trees out there, so flagging every single one of them is because it's a little tedious. Huh? What we, what would I think? That's how we do flip it the other way. Flags the ones that are coming down. Yeah. If that's that easy. If, we if, could, if there's 150 and you're taking down 50 and you're keeping 100. Right. We could show down. the ones that are going to come down. That's probably easier because right. there's many that are still staying. Does EPC get involved in that stuff? Do they go out there at the at before you know pre-construction after the self fence goes up? Yeah. Yeah. Staff will. If you can make a note that whoever goes yeah. out there, that Rich goes out there at the same time. That yeah, nice. yeah. Rick Talamelli will, will, and and staff will certainly work work with the applicant and um, as as Kurt mentioned, uh, set up a site meeting you know prior to any on site work uh, to make sure that everything is consistent with with uh, the EPC and Planning Zoning Commission approvals. Because a lot of times what happens like muskrats and all kinds of little animals live in those forests. Yeah, yeah. And birds in the trees. Mm-hmm. And when you start, then all those guys, those little animals disperse. E EPC doesn't like that. No, there are a, a bunch of uh, ospreys around there. Well, they made it. Place. I saw they made in there. You have um, 
Well, there's tons of animals. The, the, I don't know if they're deer is probably he want to get rid of, but <laughs> there's a lot of animals. The, the there osprey is a whole different kettle of fish. Because if, they, if they're in mating season, they're on the property, you just lost like six months. But these they, guys know all that stuff. Yeah. I don't think you're allowed to build during osprey mating season or something like that. Yeah. Mm. There's some crazy well, they were mating in there, but there's no nest in that section. Yeah, right. that's a matter. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You good. Thank you. Thank Hello. you. Um, I think you're okay. Would anybody else like to speak to this application? No. Okay. Any questions for anybody? It sounds like keeping this thing open, so we have another crack at it. Um, Matt Pop's coming next time to go over it. Matt Pop will be here next time. Um, our thinking at this point is continuing the hearing to June 13th. Okay. Um, and the, you guys are doing the landscaping plan? No, J. Fane Associates are. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so this will be continued to June 13th. In room 206 of Darien Town Hall. Fantastic. And there will be no new notices to the neighbors. There's just there's the notices today. We're not getting another mail or anything like that. Okay? Great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Um, that's the end of the public hearing with the general meeting. The next item of the general meeting is mantor referral number 4-2023. Board of Select and Great Island report regarding leases on the number of buildings of the property. Uh, last meeting, we drafted a um, we drafted a report to the for the mandatory referral. Um, it went out to town council. We looked at the leases again, and the town council advised that they want to add a half a sentence because I think um, the the horses do use the bridle trails and the riding rink. So, in your packet, you got a revised red line of that. Any questions, comments? It's kind of self-explanatory. Just to clarify that um, I don't believe the, from the way I understand the situation, the stables wouldn't be leasing the trails per se, but they're given the ability to use the trails the, and the paddocks. Um, the leasing of which is to be coupled with such tenants limited right to use of bridal trails, riding rings, and wash stalls, as well as apartments, et cetera, above the stables. Which we kind of mentioned at our last meeting, but was never written down on paper. So with that said, um, enter a motion to approve as redrafted. Uh, we had Adam made a motion, make me say, any other discussion? No. Vote, all those in favor? One, two, three, four, all those opposed? Same. Still, still opposed. It's still uh, four to one. Amy is is a um, Amy Barsak is not here. Okay, great. That's done. Um, next item on the agenda: discussion and deliberations only of the following: land filling and recreating application number uh, five forty eight. Um, we call it Greg Mask at fifty three Camp Abbey. This is the guy. Excuse me. That's um, expanding his driveway to get his, you know cars in and out of there. Uh, we went over it twice, we had a landscaping plan, the neighbors the neighbors weren't really super happy, everything was in rates. Um, you know, it is it is what it is. You're about to build a new property for the wall. Any questions on this one? No? Good? Yeah. Okay, staff, can you draft, yeah. draft up a, um, an approval for this one? Yeah, staff will draft uh, uh, Draft decision for your consideration at our uh, upcoming meeting. Okay, next item on the agenda, any public hearing items closed on May 30th? The only one I'd really like to just look at real quick would be um, We Beach. Anybody want to talk to you? Time to talk about that one? Okay, uh, it's pretty straightforward. There's five paddle tennis courts there. They're in the sixth. There's really no parking issues during the paddle tennis scenes. There's no lighting problems. We went over that. So, hey, it's in a, all the other five are in the first zone. Questions, comments? No, they're actually 
Okay. Um, draft, staff, can you draft up an approval for that one? Yeah, I would just note that um, of uh, Mr. Talamelli's comments that were submitted today, um, he suggested a couple things here uh, in his, he dated his, his uh, memo today dated May 20th. It should actually read May 30th. Um, on number one of his, me uh, of his comment memo here, he recommends that the design include um, quick disconnects to enable the community uh, to remove and safely store essential components in advance of the storm in connection with the heating system. Yeah, you said that. Okay, all right. You said that. Um, I don't believe that there was any note of such in the application materials that were submitted, but we'll make okay. sure that that gets into the application. The and resolution. The, correct, the resolution. Yeah, and number three here. For disconnecting. It's, it's, it's got to be someone on Parks and Rec. Yeah, Parks and Recreation. If the heater blows, they just bought themselves a new heater, which those things are expensive. Yeah. 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 Just out of, like, you need a maintenance plan for that or anything? Or? The other ones don't have yeah, that's what I'm saying. They don't have the quick connect either on the other ones. Right. And there's a, the other ones are below. Right. Do we need to, I get why they should put it, but do we need to force them to do it? The, the answer is probably not. I mean, we did this over at, um, at the other country club um, when they added tenant right. Peloton scores. You're not, you don't have to bring, they're, they're, in, they're in compliance as it is. You don't have to bring everyone up to the, the latest and greatest. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it's with the town, if those things blow, you know, they got a budget problem. It's not like the board right. of selectmen is going to, you know, approve $50,000 worth of Every year. Every year. Two seconds. Is replacing them. Yeah. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, it's fine. I don't, I don't, I don't know that. I don't know that it's needed, right? Because it's not on their plan now. Right. That's what I'm saying. So I get why you want it, but I don't know that we need to require it. Right. I don't. I, I think we're just focused on the fifth, yeah. the, the area of disturbance, which is on the plans, which is the sixth court. Yeah. They can run a little from the club. Yeah. 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 I mean, Middlesex about the same thing. They all flooded out, and they. Were, those are gaps too, though. Anything else, Tom? Whatever Tom only wants, make sure it's in the resolution. Is the bottom line. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Nothing else. All right. Um, next time, we're going to approve our minutes. We got one set of minutes to look at, which I probably lost already. Do we want to talk about uh, before we do the minutes? Do we want to talk about the delay sign thing from the ARB that yep. we didn't talk about last week? Yeah, we're going to have to include that in uh, an upcoming agenda uh, because it's a special meeting tonight. Other business can't be considered this evening, so we'll include that on the next agenda. Got it, got it. Okay. No worries. And the minutes we're going to look at is are from May 9th. It was yeah. the first night of Camp Avenue. And then we talked about the Great Island stuff. The ADUs was our second night talking about ADUs. Um, where Dave came back. Then you have a zoning resolution for um, 18 Old Kings High, which was the vet clinic. You can't change any of that stuff. Um, have another zoning resolution from 11 Seals Road. You can't change any of that stuff. Um, then we talked about Good Wives. We, we talked about Good Wives Shopping Center to allow that guy to do his um, pizza joint. That's another resolution. We can't change any of that stuff. Another resolution was from, um, I'm not a good try to pronounce it, Content Place, again. That was another, a new house. Um, Content Place. Great. Right? <laughs> <laughs> to go back to fourth grade. To get, go back to fourth grade about self-teaching. And then the last big item was the um, discussion of the um, 14 Grove Street. I think we actually really we punted that a little bit um, because we didn't hear back from ARB for the outside of the other one. Um, but we have to do that one again. Yeah, we're um, we're going to hold off on that for the moment. Um, we'll <coughs> place that on an upcoming agenda. That's the outdoor scene for the rest yeah. of the moment. So we we it was on the on the agenda the discussion with him and that approved our minutes. Um, looking for a question. Uh, page two, Justin. 
protect Ms. Barsante, uh, where she is referred to as Mr. Barsante. Now you're a good man. Okay. Where, where is that? I'm sorry. On the left hand side. Got it. Yep. yep. She's Ms. up top and she's Mr. Dunn. Yeah. Okay. Um, any other um, questions, comments, typos, scrivener's errors on that? Okay. Looking for a motion to approve as edited. Uh, Adam makes a motion. Jeff makes a second. All those in favor? Six nothing. Five nothing, Five. sorry. sorry, 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 sorry. Um, chairman's report, we're going to pass on that tonight. Director's report, anything else? Nothing. Nothing, great. Can't do any other new business. Next meeting is June 6th. Uh, what are we looking at on June 6th? We're looking at June 13th, real quick. Yeah, June 6th, we got a very busy night. Um, we have five or six different uh, applications. Um, we also may have uh, some modifications to the Corbin District. Uh, some uh, modifications to federal realty, as well as um, a request from Darien Library to finish a portion of their basement space. Um, and then on June 13th, uh, we have the public hearing scheduled for uh, the special permit for Great Island and Serenity Stables. Okay. And just for other people, Jeremy and I talked a little bit about um, the ADU thing. The public hearing for ADU is going to be still in, in the beginning of July. Um, yeah, we're going to try to we're we're going to try to fit it in before the commission breaks before uh, before August, and then likely have a second public hearing on the ADU sometime in September as well. Okay. And then the last quick question is: Do you have any clues when we might deliberate seven seconds? So if we close that one. Um, yeah, we're gonna we'll we'll try to get that in as as it, soon as as soon as, as soon as possible um, because the agendas are gonna be so uh, full going through to the to the break here. Um, we'll have to figure figure out the details, but we're gonna get it on for deliberations as soon as we can. Fantastic. Okay. With that said, looking for a motion to adjourn. It's usually Mike. Mike makes the motion. Mm -hmm. Jeff's got the second. Yep. All in favor? Five to zero. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you, TV 79.